In this series, both MBT and myself will be traversing the sands of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s history. Each episode will take a deep dive into Yu-Gi-Oh!'s past formats and unlock new strategies as new sets become available. Strap yourselves in because anything is possible. Welcome to the history of Yu-Gi-Oh!. If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code SEMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. I am so happy we get to do this one. Oh my god, not even being in the shirt of shame could dampen my mood for today because we are playing Diva Hero. Now the series has kind of shifted out of my favor, but not to worry, this is the deck that's going to bring it back. <laughs> and surprising pretty much no one, this is my all-time favorite deck in Edison format. It's just got so much going on, the plays are so varied, so interesting, and it plays some of my favorite cards of all time, the Elemental Heroes. So let me walk you through what exactly is going on in Diva Hero. Deep Sea Diva was released recently, a two-star tuner monster that can summon a level three or lower sea serpent from your deck. Now it can get either another copy of itself in this list or Spined Gilman, a three-star sea serpent monster. This enables rank five synchro plays like Sea Lord Gish Gongdon. Uh, you're gonna have to clean that one up in post, editor. However, there's a lot more going on under the hood. If you have access to something like a Destiny Hero Malicious, you can easily go into an 8 off of a Deep Sea Diva. If you have a Evil Hero Infernal Prodigy in hand and a Malicious in the graveyard, you can special the Infernal Prodigy, normal a Deep Sea Diva, summon a Deep Sea Diva, synchro the Infernal Prodigy and the first Diva into a copy of Armory Arm, and the Malicious from Graveyard and the second Diva into a copy of Colossal Fighter and win the game that way. It's also got all these really sick things that you can do with this card, Future Fusion. By revealing an elemental hero absolute zero from your extra deck, you can send a card like Infernal Prodigy or Malicious, plus something like a Treeborn Frog to the graveyard to set up four Monarch plays, of which we are playing many. We've got three copies of Caius the Shadow Monarch, which is a house and a half in this format. And if we future fusion the material for an absolute zero into the graveyard, our miracle fusion is sure to fire afterwards, allowing us to summon an absolute zero, which is just such a strong card in this format. It's got 25 to 3,000 attack depending on the board state, and if it leaves the field, you get to destroy all monsters your opponent controls. Functionally, this is a super sick mid range strategy that's lines vary completely based on what you draw and what you cycle, what you're able to mill and what you're able to find, and has the ability to access some of the most broken lines both in the extra deck, the main deck, and the side deck. So, let me go through the individual cards. First, we've got three copies of Caius the Shadow Monarch. Should surprise no one that this card is seeing play. It's extremely good, especially in this format, and can edge out close games by banishing itself. Next up, we've got a copy of Card Trooper. This is really good to mill random stuff, including our copy of Treeborn Frog. Three Deep Sea Diva, the best normal summon in the deck, except for one blue gadgety boy. One copy of Diamond Dude, our target for Stratos most of the time. You don't really want to be adding a Malicious to hand unless you have the Destiny draw already. And uh, Infernal Prodigy it comes and goes based on its utility. Diamond Dude is a good all-around card, which allows you to fire cards like Miracle Fusion quite easily. We've got Double Destiny here, Malicious. Unfortunately, that's the maximum amount you are allowed to play right now, but a wonderful way to get some synchros on your side of the field. Stratos is in this deck, as is two copies of Evil Hero Infernal Prodigy. Now, you may have never seen this card. If you control no monsters, you can specialize from your hand in attack position. Then once per turn during the end phase, if this card was tributed this turn to tribute summon a hero monster, you can draw a card. This actually comes up. Uh, firstly, its utility is mostly to specialize summon in order to go into something like a Caius. Uh, nine times out of ten, that's what you're doing, or to get a better star line for a synchro summon. But sometimes, if you're bricked on copies of Malicious, you can search this card's special attribute for a Malicious, and then later draw a card off of it. We've got Gores, of course, followed by Sangan, double Snowman Eater. This card is everywhere in this format, which is really shocking. It's uh, not particularly powerful historically, but, you know, in context and with the benefit of hindsight, we can see that a Man Eater bug with 1900 defense is quite good. We've got a Spined Gilman. This is kind of the garnet of the deck, but it's actually not terrible to draw. It having an odd number of stars puts it in a very unique position in the deck, and it enables some really stellar synchro plays. Treeborn Frog's in here as well. We are playing enough Monarchs that it's worth it. Certainly, it clashes with Future Fusion insofar as you send it for the Future Fusion. It can't immediately reborn itself, but that's not too big of a deal because you know at some point that Future Fusion is leaving. We've got Allure of Darkness. We've got Book of Moon. We've got Brain Control. We've got D Drop. Still hate this card. One copy of Future Fusion. One copy of Heavy Storm. Triple Miracle Fusion. One MST. One Reinforcement of the Army. Triple Upstart Goblin. Mir 
Mirror Force, Double Phoenix Wing, Wind Blast, Raigeki Break, Solemn Judgment, Torrential Tribute, and Trap Dust Shoot. In the side, we have a lot of transformative options. Double DD Crow, if our opponent's going for some nonsense. Uh, one copy of Snowman Eater, if it becomes a War of Attrition. Double Vanity's Fiend. This comes in quite frequently. Turns out we're a Monarch deck, and allowing us to tribute somebody Vanity's Fiend and then beat down with stuff like Stratos is extremely good. Double Bottomless Trap Hole, Triple Dust Tornado, Double Light Imprisoning Mirror for Sworn, Mind Crush, and Double Pulling the Rug for Monarchs. In the extra, we've got Triple Absolute Zero, one Gaia, because you can reveal it off of Future Fusion in order to send an Earth monster to the graveyard. There are some scenarios where you want to, like, bin a card trooper or something. We've got an Ally of Justice Cataster, an Armory Arm, a Black Rose Dragon, a Brianak, a Colossal Fighter, a Dark End Dragon, a Goyo Guardian, a Magical Android, a Sea Dragon Lord Gish Nilgadon, a Stardust Dragon, and a Thought Ruler Archfiend. The best of the best of the Synchro lineup. I am so jazzed to be playing this deck. I've been playing it off History of Yu-Gi-Oh! as well, both on my stream and on the Ed, Ed, and Edison channel, where I did a cameo recently, and in paper. I'm actually purchasing cards for the first time in a while. Uh, I'm so excited to be taking this uh, out, and I hope that I'm able to perform. Well, ladies and gentlemen, all good things must eventually come to an end. I can't believe we spent almost an entire month in Edison format. It doesn't seem like it, but we got to show off some of the coolest decks I think Joseph and I have ever had the opportunity to play. And while we are going to be moving on after this to go into some more of the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! since we still have about 10 years we still haven't covered, I'm going to miss Edison a lot. I think it's just a format, while it was a very short window in time, that there was so much diversity. The decks were, you know, reminiscent of modern Yu-Gi-Oh! to a degree where there were some combos, right? And, you know, while there wasn't these extremely just degenerate break my board style of combos, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! at its core is about just like playing as many cards as possible. And so I like that we were able to do that, but in still a balanced way, right? It never felt like in any of these games that it was unwinnable. And Joseph and I could have just with slight adjustments in our play could have taken any game at any point. But we're going to be ending on a high note with another curated selection of decks for you. I am going to be playing uh, Dragons just straight up. This is a deck that a lot of you were requesting that you wanted to see. Joseph, I believe, already went over his Diva Hero deck, which is another fantastic deck, but we are on Dragons, and this deck looks fierce. So let's go ahead and do the card by card. First up, we have an Exploder Dragon. This card, if it's destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, destroy the monster that destroyed it, and neither player takes any battle damage from attacks involving this card. What's nice is that this is searchable off of Mask Dragon, so it is a way for us to one-for-one one something off of a tutor, effectively, which is pretty nice. Three copies of Kwaki Meru Drago. Now, now, this card's very strong against a lot of the light and dark focus decks in the format because it can just stun them out. Against Joseph's deck specifically, it may not be as important. We'll see if it does come up, but it's a 1900 beater at the very least. A lot of people know this from modern Yu-Gi-Oh! because anytime there's a light or dark focus deck and there's a deck that can play dragons, then Kwaki Mirror Drago will actually rear its ugly head. We've got a light and darkness dragon, of course, three mass dragon to tutor, not just for the exploder dragon, but also totem dragon. This card is a very, very good card. This card can be treated as two tributes for the tribute summon of a dragon, and if it's in your graveyard during your standby phase and you control no monsters, you can special summon this card in attack position, but you cannot activate this effect if there are any monsters in your graveyard that are not dragon, and if it's special summoned with this effect, you banish it afterwards. So this makes going into a light and darkness dragon or even a white knight dragon even easier than it already could be because we're able to just amass a board so quickly. Being able to go mass dragon into totem, tribute for one of these, we are off to the races, especially because we have three copies of red eyes darkness metal dragon. This card being at three is disgusting and is one of the reasons why the deck is so powerful. We've also got three Red-Eyes Wyvern. This is a card that a lot of people know for the Dragoon-focused strategies, but being able to bring back a Red-Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon, which can then get you set up for the following turn, is a very nice thing in this format as well, especially because it's a bit slower. And then one copy of White Knight Dragon. This card's nice during either player's turn when a spell or trap that targets this card is activated. Negate the activation, and if you do destroy it, this is good for being able to hit through opposing cards like Dimensional Prison and the like, because they do target. And so this card, just being 3,000 attack, also can redirect attacks towards it if you pitch spells and traps uh, to the graveyard, so that's pretty neat. That's it for the monsters. For the spells, three Book of Moon, just a generically good card all around. One Future Fusion. One of the win conditions of this deck is that if your opponent has thrown everything they've got at your field, you can just go ahead Future Fusion for a five-headed dragon, and now they have to deal with a 5,000 attack monster, which is just deadly. So I love that you're playing this little package in here. We've got a True Nade, a couple copies of Gold Sark, a Heavy Storm, a Mystical Space Typhoon, Triple Up Sark Goblin. We haven't really seen much of this, but we'll get to 
this eventually, I know for sure, once we get to later stages of the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! And then the traps, double bottomless call, the haunted double D prison, mirror force, royal oppression, solemn judgment, starlight road, torrential tribute, and a trap dust shoot. For the extra deck, it's a bunch of cards we've already seen up until this point. I think Exploder Wing, or excuse me, Exploder Dragon Wing is the only card that we really haven't seen before. It is a dragon and it does require a non-tuner dragon in order to make it. At the start of the damage step, if this card battles a monster, you can destroy that monster and if you do inflict damage to your opponent equal to the attack of the destroyed monster had on the field and this card's attack must be greater than or equal to the attack for this effect to activate and resolve. But aside from that, everything else is stuff you've seen up until this point. For the side deck, I thought this was a troll, but Yamada Dragon. So again, Totem Dragon does allow you to summon dragons with two tributes just using the Totem Dragon. So if you go into a Yamada Dragon and draw until you have five cards in hand, that seems pretty damn good. I may side this in just because Joseph would shit if he saw a Yamada Dragon hit my field. A Luster Dragon's in here as well as another beater. We have a Brain Control, My Body is a Shield, Double Nobleman of Crossout, Double Dust Tornado, a Light Imprisoning Mirror, Mind Crush, Double Pulling the Rug, Double Rivalry, which is nice in a deck that's monotype like this, and another copy of Royal Oppression. This is it, you guys. The last of Edison is finally here, and I think we're gonna go out with a bang. So ladies and gentlemen, it's time to do it. Joseph, what a swan song for Edison that we are just playing just two decks that are a ton of fun. Like every deck we've played in the last month has just been a blast. I don't think you, you and I have just been having more fun in this month than maybe throughout the rest of the history of Yu-Gi-Oh combined. I don't know about you, but. No, yeah, um, I gotta agree. I was saying in the um, deck building screen that I have already not only played so much of this, both on streams, you know, uh, personally with friends, I've bought into it. Like I have cards in front of me for Edison format. It's like the first time I've been super excited to play Yu-Gi-Oh, like paper Yu-Gi-Oh with my hands in months, maybe years. <laughs> yeah, and it's, you know, that's indicative of like how Yu-Gi-Oh should be, right? Yeah. If it isn't like just forcing you to want to go out and play in person or just with other people, then, you know, that, that there's something wrong. And the fact that Edison does inspire and kind of spark that joy in people, I think is a really telltale sign that it's something special for yeah. sure. And so we're going to be ending on a very high note, I feel, although, you know, this game hasn't played out yet, so we'll have to see. But buddy, I am ready if you are. Let's I am go ahead and get ready. to that. Uh, Rock, paper, scissors. Shout out the patron is Jaden Rounds. Thank you for the support. And buddy, I actually rolled a die this time. So ooh. go ahead and uh, paper gang it up. Okay. Well, Jaden, I hope I make you proud. Oh my God. And as soon as there we're back go. to tactile paper. To Congratulations, tactile buddy. I don't even know if <laughs> Congratulations. I'm going first. It's my gift. Actually, no, it's the dies gift to you for a uh, a job well done in Edison format. Good luck, buddy. Good Let's luck see to what you, you too. got. And die, I appreciate it. This is going to be a pretty normal turn, I think. Why don't I fire an upstart goblin first? Sounds good to me. I'll take the thousand. Ooh, that changes very little, honestly. Let's go reinforcement of the army. Sounds good. Oh. Now, I don't know if you'll want to tell me, does your deck have triple upstart in it? Uh, it does. Okay, mine does as well. This may be the first time we really start to see that as a trend, because uh, I feel like up until now, we haven't seen that all that much. But, you know, I remember for the longest time, Upstart Goblin was one of these cards that people were like, eh, what's the point, right? And then once we get into like 2013, 2014, 2015, it's a three of in literally every deck. <laughs> I think it took Hoban uh, explaining that, no, no, I no, think so. you want to play a 37 card deck really badly for people to finally yeah. be like, okay, I'll do it. Yeah. For All right. sure. Uh, so here comes the boy. Time. Haven't seen him in a while. The blue gadget himself has emerged. Yep. And it, it certainly helps that um uh, this period, Upstart Goblin is legal at three, and Drollin Lockbird isn't around to ruin your plans. Uh, Unfortunate. Gonna be easy here. Just um Stratos set one pass. Uh, do your worst. The bane of every hero player's existence. Drollin Lockbird. I'll go ahead and draw. You got a dust shoot for me? I do not. Okay, we'll go to main one then. I will run myself out a Kawaki Meru Drago. That is something. Sure. We'll go ahead and attempt to hit in. All right, I'm gonna Book of Moon here targeting your Drago. No! That's fine. He's set. Uh, second main, I will also set a card and we'll throw it over to you. Stand by me. Okay, let's see how far we can go. I'm gonna go Deep Sea Diva here and trigger the effect. Oh, that's a good one. Yep. Uh, I'm going to grab Deep Sea Diva. Sounds good. I'm gonna send Stratos and Diva to the graveyard. We are going to make a Brianak. Sounds good. I will trigger the effect of the Brianak. I'll discard this Deep Sea Diva to target your set card. 
And it could be anything. Could be anything. back in hand. Do I want to go for the back row? Certainly not. Uh, now it's just a question of what I would like to go into. Stardust Dragon, of course, is very powerful. And as much as I want to make like a colossal fighter, the ability to maybe OTK you with one later is just a little too sexy. It's too tantalizing, isn't it? I am going to uh, go into Stardust Dragon here. I think that's a fair play. Yep. Uh, we're going to go to combat, and I'll get in for 25. I'll take it. All right. Back to you, buddy. All right. We'll draw. Let's see if we got anything else going on here. Uh, I think I will go ahead and set a card, and I will set another card, and I'll throw it over to you. Stand by main. All good. Hmm. It's an interesting one. Uh, let's go for card trooper here. Looks good to me. Go ahead and mill the three. All right. we Will do. Let's see a malicious, please. Ah, ooh. Good. Oh, well, Treeborn's pretty good, That's a pretty good, good one, actually. I'm a little <laughs> happy about that. It's not that. bad. Card Trooper into the set card. It is a Totem Dragon. Ooh, okay. This doesn't do anything. Right now. Just like Treeborn Frog, if this is in the graveyard during standby, you can special it back in attack position, but only if your entire graveyard is dragons. And you can only Correct. do it once. Yes, because he gets banished if uh, he leaves the field after this effect. I will take the 25. All right, sounds good. Back to you, buddy. We'll draw. In the standby phase, I will resurrect said Totem Dragon. It's fine. We'll go into main one, and we're going to tribute him off because he counts for two tributes for Light and Darkness Dragon. Yeah, there he is. And he has appeared. Uh, we will go to battle. This is tough. I really want to hit into Car Trooper for all the damage, but I also want to just, like, ensure I can get over Stardust. <laughs> so I actually think I have to hit Stardust here. All right. Uh, to the grave he goes, and I take 300. You will take three. Second main, uh, I think I'm pretty content. Thank you for banishing my Totem Dragon. Go ahead. All right, stand by main. All good. Okay, so how does Light and Darkness uh, Dragon work with uh, Treeborn Frog? Does anyone remember? <laughs> um, I believe it will just go ahead and keep perpetually summoning itself, and I will lose all the attack points. <laughs> Sick. Uh, I'm glad we got to show off this interaction. So uh, yep. I'll treeborn, it'll be negated. I'll treeborn, it'll be negated. I'll treeborn, it'll be negated. And finally, I'll treeborn while your lad is at, I believe, 500 attack. Uh, it'll go down to 300 attack. Sick. Oh, no, no. Uh, it can't go down anymore because it'll be at 400 defense when it's at 800 attack because it loses attack and defense. So he loses it in 800, 400 before the treeborn does finally appear. Awesome. All right. I'll go to uh, M1 here. I'm going to trigger the card trooper if you'll allow it. Yep. And again, exactly why I want to kill stardust <laughs> ah man all right those are not this great could be better i can't be too mad though because we got the tree born uh i'm gonna allure of darkness here yeah that's fine okay, we'll draw two. Oh wow that changes a lot pitch uh, that diamond dude i'm actually not going to i'm gonna banish the infernal prodigy Ooh, okay next i'm gonna d draw while i have material for it that sounds good there goes the diamond dude that's sick. Wow, that's very sick. Whoa, that's holy sickamoly. I'm going to tribute this Treeborn Frog. We're going to go for a Caius the Shadow Monarch. And Great. I'm going to target this card right here. And I will chain it. It's a bottomless. Let's get him out. Fine. All right. Well, uh, in card trooper. Uh, so you take 400? Oh, I know. He's 19. Never mind. <laughs> uh, so I take... <laughs> Fool! Uh, so I take the 1100 here, and uh, Lad will get to trigger. Actually, uh, it won't because I don't have anything to bring back. So I was going to say, I, would, I hope yeah. it doesn't trigger. I don't really have anything to do with that. Uh, we're going to set two, and you're good to go. Yeah. Uh, sounds good. We'll draw. Uh, we'll go into main one here. Not Ooh, yet, buddy. Not yet. Not yet. All right. Go ahead and take a look. Not great. Wyvern, Not great. Drago, Tribute, Trunade. Hmm. Well, all of these out the card trooper, unfortunately. Let's go for Drago. Drago makes the most sense to me. We'll put him back in the deck. We'll shuffle up. Anything else? Nope. All right. Uh, main one, we'll run out of Wyvern. Sure. We'll hit the card trooper. I'll take 14. Yep. And then you get to draw a card. Second main, I'll set one. Go ahead. Draw for turn. Stand by main. Ooh. All good. That's interesting. All right. I am going to set one, and you are good to go. Setting one, huh? Yes. I think a bit more defensively here. We'll go into main one. What would you set in this deck? Is this deck on Raikou? I actually have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> what do we want to do? Well, I suppose we'll go to battle. Let's see what this is. It's a snowman eater, a card infinitely oh. more powerful than your pitiful Raikou. Yeah, that card's actually pretty good. Uh, Weathered Eyes Wyvern will fall. Uh, I will go to second main here. I'll set another one, throw it over. Uh. Okay, I will draw for turn. Stand by main. That's All good. Set one card. You're good to go. Now we have to out the snowman eater. Fun stuff. Easier uh, said than done. He's got a big old ass on him. I know. That's that's where the bottom part of his snowman 
form physique comes from. I have no idea what I'm saying. Uh, oh, that could have been anything. Could that could have been, been anything. It <laughs> could have been anything. I don't know why it did that. Go ahead. All right. Uh, stand by main. All good. All right, upstart goblin. Sure. I'll gain a thousand. I'm going to activate future fusion. Oh, yeah, that's a card. Okay. We're going to reveal elemental hero absolute zero, and I'm going to send destiny hero malicious and also spined gilman to the grave. Sure, of course. The most feared of the water monsters in your deck. Oh, certainly. Can we do this? I know that, that, that this card is probably torrential. I am going to set one card, and honestly, I think I can just wait you out on this. Uh, I'll pass turn. We'll draw. Go to main one. You can wait me out. That's pretty bad. I'm in a gold sark. Okay, well, I can no longer wait you out. Uh, I will go ahead and banish a future fusion of my own, actually. Ah, you two have a future fusion target, and it's pretty I good. I do, <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, you, f you wonder how they made a painful choice for dragons ever legal in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, yet here we are. Uh, and, you uh, know, unfortunately, yours may be coming to fruition a lot quicker than mine, so that is a concern. Uh, I will, I think, just pass it over. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I think that... Um, Five-Headed Dragon is actually the reason that Future Fusion finally got hit? I believe so, yes. I think it was <laughs> amongst a million other reasons, yes. It was one of them, for sure. Man, I'm never getting this fucking frog back. All right, go ahead. <laughs> we'll draw. Yep. We'll go to main one. Uh, hmm. I'm going to Giant True Nade. Uh, that's fine. Okay. Everything goes back. Uh, not the true nade. That does not go back. <laughs> that goes in the graveyard. That'd be sick. Uh, and then I think I am just going to set four cards and throw it to you. Sure. Go ahead, buddy. <laughs> All good. Would you like to activate future fusion again? <laughs> no, I'd like to activate this idiot frog finally. We did it. See, you're welcome. I gave him back to you. All right. Uh, well, I'm glad that you finally committed to that. I'll fire off a heavy storm. I will activate Starlight Road. Ah, oh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> Bring out the boy. Yep, 38. You thought you would have learned your lesson the first time this happened to you, buddy? I think that you may be operating on an incorrect assumption. Fair. I did learn my lesson. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Give me your monster. Let me think about this, actually. Okay, so you take the Stardust. I know your hand is Future Fusion, and you had four back row, although to be fair, you could have set those other two cards as part of your back row. You may row. have seen a couple of them. Yeah, so you may not necessarily have five spells and traps. You could, though. I really don't like this. I'm going to book the Stardust. Mm, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. All right, we're going to go one, two, three, four and you are good to go. Do you declare a thumb war? All right, I'll draw. Yep. Uh, I believe you get now, your future fusion back here. Yes, I do. Thank you in the standby phase. So that is now out. Now, Stardust is nice. Uh, the problem is there's plenty of cards in this format that deal with it, unfortunately. But I will attempt to flip them up. That's fine. Uh, then next, I'm going to activate my own future fusion. I will Typhoon targeting Future Fusion. Uh, so now I have a decision. I could negate this with Stardust. I don't get the Stardust back, but how much do I value Future Fusion being out is the question. May it just be worthwhile to negate here and just get the value. Yeah, I actually think I'm gonna negate. Uh, and then I'm gonna Regeki break targeting your Future Fusion. Pitch for cost. Your Future Fusion is gone. Yep, okay, sounds good. All right, so that solved that problem then. Man, what a fucking game, Joseph. It's, what a it, game. Is, it is silly for sure. What a game. What a game. You know, I just realized you only have like eight cards left in your deck. We're, we're running low. <laughs> running low. Uh, that doesn't mean you can't kill me, but uh, the options are dwindling. That's for sure. Uh, I think I'm just going to pass. Go ahead. Okay. Draw for turn. Stand by me. All good. Ooh. Sure. Hmm. Hard one. Um, I am good as well. I'll draw. Uh, I think I will just set one and throw it back to you. Go ahead, buddy. Stand by me. All good. Finally. This took forever. Miracle fusion. Oh. All right. Um, <laughs> that's that, a card. Is that okay with you? Uh, I don't know, actually. Maybe that's not okay with me. That card's pretty good. <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to oppression. Oh, man. 
Do you have a response? Yeah, I'll Phoenix Wing Wind Blast, discarding Ooh. Infernal to target oppression. Yeah, that'll do it. All right, top of the deck it goes. Go one, two here. Here comes the boy. And then Torrential at your earliest convenience. <sighs> I mean, I'm going to just get wrecked here if I don't anyway, I feel like. So, yeah, I think I'm going to. Sure. Uh, to grave, to grave, to grave, and then add And then the second Miracle Fusion. Oh, God, I wish. Nope, that is it. Deciding if I want to, like, poke with the fucking Destiny Hero Malicious. Yeah, let's, Mally. Do, let's, let's do that. <laughs> I gotta be honest, I'm shocked you still have one in deck. Right, all right, combat. I'll take the eight, sure. Go ahead, buddy. All right, we'll draw. Could be anything. Could be. Uh, I will run out another Mask Dragon. Sure. We'll hit for six. Mirror Force. Ooh, that's pretty good. Yep, sure. Uh, second main, I will set a card and throw it to you. Stand by. How many life yep. points do you want to take? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would prefer none right now. Thank you. Uh, I guess I got to call your bluff on this last card. Uh, we're going to go Mally and Treeborn to the grave. I'm going to normal summon Gores. Wow. Into the Gores, huh? Sure. I'm going to try it. You got it, buddy. Oh! You got it. Wow. God, what a game again. one. Joseph, I fucking love this format. Like, that, <laughs> that, was, that so was... That encapsulates, like, everything about Edison that just makes it so fun. I mean, there's combos, the fact that the games can go very long and get very grindy. Just, like, the, the back and forth, the interplay. Oh, I just love so much about it. I'll go first. Uh, hopefully, we can take this to a game three. Good luck, buddy. Good luck to you, too. To the untrained eye, the last game might have seemed like it sucked. Uh, but I guarantee you, based on my hand, it was hanging on a razor's edge the whole time. We'll go ahead and set a pair and we'll pass it over. Okay. Uh, stand by me. Let's go. All good. One. Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> Could you imagine if I set before activating Upstart Goblin? Oh, you fool. How dare you? Uh, that does not change anything. Okay. Let's, um. Perfect. Set, uh, I don't know, three and you are good to go. Okay. We'll draw. Anything is standby. No. Go to main one. All right, I'll run out of Kwaki Mary Drago. Uh, we'll go to battle. Let's see the Snowman Eater. As you wish. There he is. And then second main, I think I will just throw it over to you. All right, stand by main. Oh, these draws. <laughs> they're, they're making me think I don't like it. <laughs> All right, let's go uh, Caius. Target. Uh, the monster. Was a mask Dragon. Oh, sick. That's like the most frightening card in your deck for me. It is. It's so frightening that Dueling Book is not permitting it to leave the field. <laughs> <laughs> says, no, 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 you need this, buddy. You would tell me if that back row is anything, right? Of course. Okay, good. Course well, I'll just hit it then. All right, uh, I won't say anything. It's, I'll take 24. Oh, God, thank you. Okay, go ahead, buddy. All right, we'll draw. Uh, we'll go to main one. I just want some simple things, Joseph. I just want some simple things. I'm going to set a pair and I'm going to pass. Draw for turn. I'm going to Rota. We're going to go grab a Stratos. I guess I'll normal summon the Stratos and activate the effect. Let's grab... Do I want Diamond Dude or do I want Evil Hero Infernal Prodigy? I mean, it's it's such a funny card. Yeah, let's get Infernal They're both Prodigy. so good. <laughs> All right, uh, I'll go to Battle Phase. We'll go to play around. Ugh, I can't really play around anything, really. You wouldn't be on Snowman Eater. You wouldn't be on Raikou. You have to play all dragons for Totem. So we're going to go Stratos into the set card. It is Exploder Dragon. So I will take out your Stratos. Okay. And then I'll try and get in for another 24. I will Call of the Haunted targeting my Exploder Dragon. Uh, yeah, that's fine. And you like to redeclare. I think I would. I think it's better for me to uh, keep this off your side of the field. Yeah. All right. I'll take the 14. Caius is down. In fact, you will take nothing. Exploder Dragon is Oh, yeah, because there's no battle damage card. involved. Correct. That's very good. All right, I'll set that one was a video game go. promo, if you can believe that. Uh, we'll draw. Yep. Main one. I think I'll set one and pass. Go ahead. I will draw for turn. Stand by main. I will special summon evil hero Infernal Prodigy. Oh, the boy has emerged. Sure. I will tribute summon <laughs> Destiny Hero Malicious. Oh my God. And get the draw. <laughs> oh, this end phase, buddy. He's coming. He is coming. Uh, I will take the 800. Oh, thank sure. goodness. All right. I'll go to end. I'll try to trigger the effect of Infernal Prodigy. That's fine. That's probably the first time that's ever resolved. It happens frighteningly video. often in this deck. Oh, uh, we'll go to main one. I will set one and throw it to you, buddy. Draw for turn. Stand by main. Shit, what am I supposed to do here? Attack your set card? Okay, Mass Dragon has 1100 decent fence, so I'm okay to run out of Sangan. Battle phase, I'll try to attack your set card. It is Totem Dragon. <laughs> Shit, that's way worse. Um, I will attack you directly. Okay, so I will take 800. Uh, I guess I will pass. 
We'll draw. Stand by. I will attempt to bring back the totem dragon. I will activate DD Crow targeting totem dragon. No! Why would you do this to me? Because I can't be lad, buddy! <laughs> That's fine, why. fine. I mean, I guess that's a good reason. <laughs> we'll go to main one. I will run out a Red Eyes Wyvern. I will go to battle. You know, actually, I'm just going to pass. I'm not going to do anything. All right, I'll draw for turn. Stand by main. What are your set cards? They're nothing. I'm sure they're nothing. I'll normal summon Deep no. Sea Diva and trigger the effect. Oh, boy. Uh... Probably gonna have to do this now, otherwise this may be a disaster. I will oppression. I will activate Phoenix Wing Wind Blast, pitching tree. There it frog. is again. I'll target the oppression. Sure. To the top of my deck it goes. All right, let's go grab ourselves a deep sea diva. Yep. All right. Uh, first things first. Uh, diva and malicious to the graveyard. Let's get ourselves a Stardust. Sounds good. Second thing, second. Let's activate Malicious' effect in Grave. We'll banish him for a Malicious. This is where this deck just gets so gross. This so is the fact that sick. Diva can get itself, and then you have Mali just recycling too to go into two eights. Nasty. I guess I'll go Colossal Fighter. I think this is lethal. Sure. Uh, let me count my warriors. One, two. Oh my God, they're all fiends. One, two. It's actually lethal even without that because you have a thousand, two thousand. You have forty-five hundred without even counting warriors. All right. I will uh, go to combat and attack. <laughs> You got it, buddy. Uh, it was just a dust tornado set. My hand was lad uh, and double red MD, Holy which shit. is crazy if you actually let me keep a monster on the field, but you never did. Oh, no, so, this, this one was literally, if you ever stuck a monster, I was dead. <laughs> basically, I mean, that's how this deck works. Like if it can just get, you give it an inch, it just goes a mile. And this deck is so powerful. That, oh. you know, if you play around it correctly, it's just, it's unfortunate. I'm but, running through the lines yeah. in my head. I'm like, oh, well, you can banish the Wyvern for the DMD and then DMD to trigger DMD. Oh, no, it says itself. Okay, well, you can summon the Light and, oh, no, you can't do that Can't either. special summon that either. Yeah, exactly. So, like, the only thing I could have potentially done is I could have, like, banished Wyvern for Red MD. Red MD, I mean, to be fair, I wouldn't have gotten Red MD out because you would have just judgmented Red MD. Right. Like, it wouldn't have even gotten that far. But had that not even been the case, I could have gone Red MD to get back one of my other two to at least get some bit of board presence but with two back row, I could have dusted one blindly just to hope that that stuck. I was hoping to just be able to be able to get one. I wanted the Wyvern engraved to be able to then recur it with like Red MD at some point, but right. I think I had to push at that point just because like my back was to the wall and I didn't have much else going on. Let's do a game three, buddy. I think I think we have to. It's the end oh, of Edison. Yeah. Oh, of course. We got to do one more. No, we got to yeah. do one more. No, I, I do want to say, I think that... Um... Oh, you might get flamed in the comments for playing this super reserved, but into three back row, I think you kind of have to. Like, my three back row were Judgment, Phoenix Wing, Wind Blast, Mirror Force. Like, you do kind of have to play uh, pretty slow against that. And uh, it's difficult yeah. when all I need is Deep Sea Diva to turn a board of malicious pass into another. All right, buddy. Good luck. I'm going to opt to go first here since you just completely just pile drived me that first set. Well, it was, but, uh, it was, yeah, it was not particularly. The first uh, game was pretty good. The first game was pretty good, but uh, the second game, not so much. Hopefully this, I, I feel a little bit better looking at this hand because I didn't draw a hand of all monsters like I did in the second game, but I'll start with a gold Sark. We're going to get rid of a copy of Future Fusion. God, never got I to use this card this. either. Yeah, this card is, um. It's good in my deck, for sure. Uh, it sets up Miracle Fusions, uh, threatens Absolute Zero, gets Treeborn Frog into Grave. Boy, it's good in your deck. It is so very good. Oh, for sure. For sure. I'll just set a pair and pass. Go ahead, buddy. Uh, this is a rough hand. I'm going to begin with an Allure of Darkness. All good. Would you believe it got rougher? Yes, because Allure of Darkness does that. <laughs> I'm going to banish Destiny Hero Malicious. Oh, that's uh, not good. No, it is not. I will set two, and you are good to go. All right, we'll draw. I do have a dust shoot. Uh, why are you doing this to me, buddy? Sure. Oh, shit. You get to see some of the spice of this deck being the White Knight Dragon. I mean, I have to take the DMD, I feel like, because uh, otherwise you kill me. Oh, my God. Holy shit, I might be dead anyway. Okay, we'll take the DMD. Sure. So, I mean, this ends a little bit better. It's, uh, it's uh, very slightly else? better. No, that's it. Anything else on standby? Okay. So main one, uh, I am going to tribute this totem dragon oh, for a wow. white knight dragon. <laughs> there he is. Go to battle track. for 3k. Oh my god, that is not a once per turn. It is not. 
which is crazy about this card. I'll take three. All right. I mean, it doesn't matter in the face of some cards, but it's also not terrible. Uh, I will set another card. Could be anything. I'll throw it's it to the you. Dim Prison. Oh, God. That is really rough. Can I just say I love that a deck actually plays White Knight Dragon? <laughs> like, I never thought I would see the day. I'm going to Wind Blast this card. Pitch I'm for cost. Pitched. Malicious. There he oh, is. wonderful. Now, if you have the third one in hand, I'll feel really good about it. Uh, sure. Malicious is semi. <laughs> oh, even better. Okay. Go ahead, buddy. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, we'll go to main one. Run out the wyvern. Hit for 48. Got a gores? No. Okay. Uh, second main. I think I'll just pass. Go ahead. Uh, well, I'll brain control your wyvern for Caius and die. Wow. That was not <laughs> close. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Why couldn't you have gotten that hand last game? God damn it. You didn't even get to get to Future Fusion. You, I we, did You it. won too fast. I won too fast. I mean, I guess you were right. I had to play it aggressive. And so here we are. Let's go again, buddy. That took like three seconds. We got oh, time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We got time. I, I, Let's I'm do down. another. Let's just keep playing this for like hours. <laughs> Let's just go. I'm not All even going to side. I'm not even going to side. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll just pick first here. All right. Yeah, and this is what I mean, right? The fact that you just want to jump back into another game. Like, how many formats in Yu-Gi-Oh! actually encourage that? Make sure you draw your card before I'll draw you uh, two, do anything. Baby. You will get to draw two. I'll take the thousand as well. I don't know about that one. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Joke's on you. I just made you draw into the second malicious. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll go to main one. I will set, and I will set a pair past you. Uh, stand by main. Go ahead. All good. Ooh, interesting. We'll draw. Just passing there uh again probably a fun little card called snowman eater could be anything <sighs> how do i deal with this crap i will say snowman eater actually holds He's its own against this deck off. pretty well snowman yeah. eater is so good i i he came up in uh prog playoffs just because we needed like a removal spell uh but he is just like the the 1900 defense but uh, the fact that it's not a flip effect, there's just so much going for this guy. It's just man eater bug with an ass. Like, it's so good. Mm -hmm. Uh, whoo. What do we feel like doing? I mean, of course, if it is snow man eater, it could be anything. I mean, it, yeah, but it, yeah. well, let's let's find out, buddy. Let's find out. Show it, it to me. It was snow man eater, yeah. Of course, yep. Getting him out. Man eater bug with an ass. Uh, second main, I will normal summon another mass dragon sure i will banish for red md take your five good sir and uh, uh are you doing anything with prio yeah i would like to use the effect yeah sure we'll get a mass dragon back yep uh go ahead <laughs> and yes i will take my five for hitting with the mass dragon how do i do this stand by me phoenix wing wind blast pitching prodigy to target mast dragon sure that's fine uh, i'm gonna normal summon caius there he is. I'll trigger targeting DMD. I will book of moon my red MD in response. Mm, this this does does this work the way you want? It does because it says banish that target, and when book of moon flips it, it changes the it no longer is the same target. I have gotten so many book of moon rulings wrong so frequently over the last week. I don't know what it is. To be fair, it doesn't matter because you already won, and if I'm wrong, you know, so be it. But I'm almost certain that's how this works. Oh Jesus Christ! Yep. All right, uh, we will bring out the boy elemental hero absolute zero. If that's cool. With Just. You. Just when I thought. Yeah, that's fine. All right, let's go to combat. Uh, what's the ass on that guy? 24. That's why I thought this was going to work well, but evidently not. Uh, I, you know, I'm going to lose it anyway. I'll deprison. Ooh, that's pretty good. Uh, this does pop your monster. It does, because Ab Zero is one of the few cards that says leaves the field. And I believe back in the day, uh, this card would also trigger if it went to the extra deck, like if you compulsed it. Heavy. Ah, no, I needed these. <laughs> Damn, these are both really good. <laughs> Mirror Force and... Torrential. Torrential. Okay, those are pretty good. Uh, I will bring out the Mass Dragon once more. You sat on that heavy. Yep, Mass Dragon's fine. I've got another oh, Red MD, buddy. let's go. <laughs> if only Red MD could get Red MD, but... He's just you know, a guy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's big enough to hit Caius, so I'll take it. Go ahead. One time Snowman Eater. I'll draw. That's terrible actually <laughs> oh my god uh yeah that's not good no that's awful actually all right 28 go ahead one time could be anything <laughs> could be anything man this red md would be so good if i could actually get some value off of it so snowman eater set you could also set something to not die here uh, there also is that possibility uh, all right buddy let's see it 
Easy. Easiest snowman Easy. of my life. <laughs> yep, go ahead. Uh, stand by main. Oh, you're fucked, oh. buddy. This Am game's I? over. I normal summon Spined Gilman! Shit! Am I gonna lose to fucking Spined Gilman of all things? All right, go ahead. Can I get a good draw? That's not bad. Uh, I will bring out Kawaki Meru Drago. That's not bad. I'll take we'll 200 hit. here. Yep. Uh, I'll go to end phase. I will reveal my Exploder Dragon. Now you can see the predicament I was in before. <laughs> I see. Kawaki Meru Drago is not good when you have no hand. <laughs> go ahead. Go to main one. I will run out of Wyvern. Yep. <clears throat> 37. I uh, go ahead. I will reveal once more. Stand by main. Uh, I will heavy. Sure. Oh, okay. Uh, brain control your Drago. Gross. Yep. That card uh, has been so good for you this set. I'll take eight. Uh, <laughs> combat. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, second main, we will set one. Sack? And I'm not revealing. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> I think I mean, I'm dead to the Exploder, though. Uh, you are dead to Exploder. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Uh, no one takes battle damage. <laughs> oh, from the Exploder. That's right. But, Joseph, no! you do die to Totem Dragon. No! come on. <laughs> oh, that, that, is, that is the case. Oh, I also man. would have gotten Red MD back in end phase if this game prolonged, if I didn't summon because yeah. of the Wyvern, which is gross. So, I, need, I mean... Uh, I need what, like, Stratos... Uh, a reinforcement diamond dude or you needed a hero infernal gainer. and then let me see what i got yeah do, 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 do. it was upstart goblin which would have converted to <laughs> the one that i can't banish for miracle fusion oh fantastic <laughs> perfect yeah, yeah yeah okay well that was good these i mean were these <laughs> were fun deep. yeah and the, the last two games were you know the complete opposite of the first two games. <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> Uh, Just goes to show how Yu-Gi-Oh can go and sometimes. Lose that last game, but uh, yeah, it's these, fine um, though. These these are certainly neat. I I love these uh these matches so much. I'm so like uh the hero the diva hero deck is one that I personally really like, and uh, I it has been nice. All of my friends who are like tangentially into Yu-Gi-Oh who watch history are like, dog, I have to play Edison and like have bought into it now. And like, we're planning meeting up really? and jamming games. I'm like, it's been so great. And I'm super excited. Do you have Diva Hero in paper? Uh, I have it like 40% done. I'm waiting on- Okay, so no. <laughs> I'm waiting on the <laughs> Maliciouses? Cause I don't want to break up my existing hero deck. Oh, uh, I see. So you need to have more Maliciouses. How greedy. Yeah. And then if Malicious ever gets unbanned, I'll be sitting atop the pile. That's true. That's true. Mm. Now this is just this has just been so much fun. I also think too, shockingly, this format is very accessible to get into from a price point. Like oh, yeah. everything in most of these decks comes at common probably at this point because this format's ten years old, right? Yeah. Uh, so if I guess I would say like the couple exceptions are um, trap dust shoot is like an eight dollar common, uh, and uh, armory arm is f and thought ruler archfiend for some reason or money. But uh, the amount of times you go into thought ruler. Eh, not too frequent. Right, exactly. And you really only need Armory Arm, you know, For maybe if you're just playing Fish bullshit. OTK. Yeah. yeah, exactly, right. Like, if you were playing that deck, like, I would say it's a must. And even so, most of the time, it's like GOAT format, right? People kind of just play with this universal extra deck, like, in that format. You could arguably do that here, too, to basically say, okay, like, the standard extra deck was this. I have access to this stuff. Because people just want to play the format at the end of the day. But aside from that, I do agree with you. Like most, uh, Like, most of the rest of these cards are just incredibly cheap and aside from like the few outliers if the worst thing you have to worry about is an eight dollar trap dust shoot i think you're doing just fine yeah. <laughs> this has been bittersweet though joseph i mean we are now finally at the end of edison i still can't believe we spent a whole month here and it just seems like we just started this yesterday but i said this before all good things must come to an end and so we are going to be moving on to the post shining darkness. And I don't think there's a lot shining about it, but if anyone who has already played the format knows what's to come next, but it is going to be a breath of fresh air to experience some of the next parts of the history of Yu-Gi-Oh. We do have to move on. We still have 10 plus years of this game to cover, but I definitely think this is going to be one of my favorite parts of the series for sure. For sure. It, it, it is kind of rough. Like, uh, 2011 is kind of like the end of the first decade of Yu-Gi-Oh! And now we're entering the second decade of Yu-Gi-Oh! And we'll spend a lot longer here than we did in the past because everything is so much better documented and trends were so much uh, more frequent. But, um, for a lot of people, uh, and a lot of people who have sounded off in our comments section, um, this was the last time they played Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, yeah. I've, I've met a ton of people 
who said, I loved playing these synchro formats. I remember Stardust. I remember Goyo. I remember Colossal Fighter Armory Arm. I remember Heroes. I remember Deep Sea Diva. But this next format is... I mean, there's no other word for it. It is one of the worst formats of all time. And unfortunately, the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! has some of these really beautiful, bright moments like Edison that last just a couple of months. We find out uh, when examining them historically just how wonderful they were. And it's also got these periods of miserable, awful, <laughs> just terrible <laughs> gameplay. And that's the history of Yu-Gi-Oh!, you know? Uh, we don't want to sort of um, uh, romanticize it. Uh, we take the good with the bad, and we are unfortunately leaving the good, and we are we are about to enter the bad, buddy. It is going to get quite bad. I think bad. I like to say often that we experience the worst of Yu-Gi-Oh! so that we can, or rather we endure the worst of Yu-Gi-Oh! so that we can experience the best of Yu-Gi-Oh! Mm -hmm. And because when Yu-Gi-Oh! is at its peak, there is just nothing that can top it, at least for me. And uh, I know you feel similarly. Oh yeah. So, you know, just when you look at the entire chronology of everything we've done thus far, that's that's been the fun of it, right? I think those lows are what makes the highs that much better. And it is poetic that this was actually our one year anniversary for the history of Yu-Gi-Oh as well. Uh, I, I can't believe we've already been doing this series for that Wait, long. Wait, seriously? These two yeah. were meshed this up is so beautifully. Wow. Yeah. It's episode 53, which is technically the first year anniversary. Uh, 52, I thought was, but I guess a whole year would be from one to 53 because that's 52 weeks. But right. yeah, we're already at a year in, in uh, real time, which is crazy. And buddy, I've just been having a blast sitting down and playing these games with you every single week. Each episode is its own unique flavor of fun, and I wouldn't have it any other way. So thank too, you, buddy. man. These have been fantastic. So guys, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the History of Yu-Gi-Oh! and brings Edison format to a close. We have to shout the patrons as always. So big shouts to Shadow1317, Moto, Sean Alling Jr., Cameron Smith, and Gayoko, Tim Zero X3, Ike Ironfang, Pony Starkey, and Musa, Michael Dente, Part 2, Dan the Man Hoban, Synchro Guy, Ole, Mystic Walk, Sylvia Wilds, Draconic Rockslide, Dolly Wop, Logan Thomas, Peter Gregory, Thomas Nelson, Cole T, Jordan Coons, Kaelvin Iron Bladesman, Pure Ace, Jesse Wood, True Nerdgasm, Brother Paul, Chris Hood, Lumpy, Nehru Celeste, David Lee, Rockley325, Yusuf Aslan 05, Lane Rogers, Chat God, Silent Agent 216, I Side in Grand Maju and Salad, Sky Rose, Dylan Hunter, Brett Harvey, John 2 Based, App at the Astro, Brody Eastwood, Day Seer, Carlos DT, Flannel Daddy, Give Me Speedroid or Give Me Death, MBT's Hardlang, Ashley Jensen, Cypher Peon, Perp6, TC Gaming, Matthew Brady, Edison format it's still so fitting uh ash blossom toe sniffer not as fitting yeah. dr solace mac max mercero and tom russell thank you guys so much for watching the video and we will see you next time